I'd like next to uh, introduce Troy Emery Twig. Uh, Troy is Blackfoot from the Kainai Nation, and he's currently a master's candidate in dance at York University. He's a performer, a dancer, and a writer who's worked um, in dance and theater as an independent artist. He has trained and worked with various artists and institutions from around the globe, including Montreal's Bill Coleman and Lawrence Lemieux, Kristinal Latkova and Ladislav Sogu of the Czech Republic, Vancouver's Battery Opera, Toronto Centre for Indigenous Theatre, and the Calgary Aboriginal Arts Awareness Society. Um, so please join me in welcoming Troy to the podium. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> does anyone mind if I take off my shoes? <laughs> I swear to God, they, they, my feet don't smell. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'm nice and comfortable now. Yeah, don't be afraid. <laughs> Thanks. Lee. It's a great honor for me to be here in the homeland, Calgary, Alberta. Yay! I spent time in Toronto, and uh, if if you've been there, it is the concrete jungle. But uh, there's many um, inspiring things that evolve from that city, and I was very honored to to have been there at York University and worked with so many wonderful people um, and uh, working at the Centre for Indigenous Theatre and uh, working with the wonderful Lee Miracle. And uh, it's an honor for me to be here and I just want to acknowledge my great teachers and people that I've worked with, such as Lee and Joan Cardinal Schubert and, and my aunt, Beverly Hungry Wolf. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so uh, a little bit about myself. Um, uh, I'm a dancer. I'm interested in movement, I'm interested in the language of movement, and I'm interested in, in how we place our bodies in space and time, and what we can say through our bodies. And I just want to be begin by um, reading an article that I had written, and this was very early, early on, um, when Joan called me and I was like, oh, 10 minutes, what do you do, what do you do in 10 minutes? And you start looking through things, and, and the amazing thing was that I, I was able to clean my house last night. <laughs> I was looking for this one article and I was like, oh my god, I'm not doing anything until I find this article, right? And I was very intrigued to, to bring it and read it. And uh, so I went through the whole thing and I moved back from Toronto. So, so my house is in order, so I get to go back home to Lethbridge and, and, and enjoy myself when I get there. But uh, it happened to be in my office today and I looked at it. But I also found this and I thought, hmm, okay, so what is it that I really want to say? What is it that I really want to do? And I looked at this and I thought, wow, this was an early article that I had written, you know, that, that sort of describes my curiosity and, and where I'm going. <clears throat> the title of the article is um, A Story of an Injury at Union Station, How Ancient Memories Travel Through the Blood, Peter Chin and Me. I was sitting and speaking with a colleague of mine and discussing this idea of how dancers transform themselves, utilizing body isolations to capture specific and authentic movement qualities of a particular style of dance. <laughs> Microphone problems. God, you brought the curse, didn't you? <laughs> For instance, how we train ourselves, our thoughts, and what it is we do to completely immerse ourselves wholly and honestly into performance. Nothing explains how we do it, and we spend a lifetime in a particular cultural surrounding, observing and being a part of it that defines how we move and what our capabilities are. Dancers may have an advantage of learning how to isolate certain parts of the body and duplicating movement to represent what it is they are trying to recreate, interpret, and or imitate. But how does a particular breed of people succeed in adapting qualities of others and making this intrinsic of their own style and way of moving? Well, let me introduce you to a little fellow, very big in the Canadian dance scene, by the name of Peter Chin. The ironic thing about this national, astonishing, established choreographer and dancer is that he did not train in dance at all. Along his journey in, in the dance world, it has been stated to him that he should perhaps not seek training for the very reason that this may interrupt the gift that he has been given as a mover or may disturb it in some way. <clears throat> 
Mr. Chin is the artistic director of Tribal Crackling Wynn, who has been working and developing his style with various cultures through, uh, around the globe. When I spoke with Peter Chin, we were quite amazed to learn that we had both studied with some familiar people in the world of dance. I had taken a workshop with Chin at York University in Toronto, where he introduced a different method of transformation and trance through movement, a subtle impulse initiated from the core of the body <clears throat> that has the capabilities to expand into interesting pers personal narratives of movement. Transformation is something that I have been working with to incorporate into my own work after spending a month developing work for a Vancouver dance theatre company by the name of Battery Opera. Opera artistic director Lee Su Fei introduced animal transformations to the company and utilized gestures, hand gestures and movements such as the Indonesian dance forms. Chin had been exploring the similar technique with us in the workshop. Immediately I thought this way of working was all too familiar to me. I had done workshops with Maria Darmangashi, an Indonesian, Javanese, court, and Balinese dancer who introduces more of the style traditionally. Much to my mild amazement in our discussion, we had learned that we knew and worked with her, both at one time or another, on our journeys. Chin had also worked with various Aboriginal artists, as well as First Nations Red Sky Company to develop work in Toronto. Working with such diverse cultures in a contemporary dance style clearly defines Peter Chin as unidentified and uncategorized. <clears throat> Born in Jamaica and based in Toronto, this award-winning multidisciplinary artist was educated in a variety of forms including voice, piano, sculpture, video, and performance art. Mr. Chin has recently expanded into the world of dance and choreography, which he very interesting interestingly claims may have come from his ancestors traveling through the blood. Peter became almost obsessed with how the body is capable of moving from every twitch in the face to the pointing of the toes and became insistent on practicing and feeling very comfortable and connected with these actions. He is interested in this inner life that gets revealed through arts, unveiling the mysteries. This, he states, is very personal. It allows for the dialogue or text to be made available through movement. In telling his own story, when someone begins to move, what he did find fascinating was just the impulse and submitting to a state of transcendence with no defined possibilities, structures, or literal explanatory narratives. Chin states that his movement goes beyond the stage and acts as synapses of transferring information, never depicting anything. He introduces his method as a way to compose while the body is engaged in the inner logic. This way of working for Chin is revealing the inner stories situated at the core. These become ways of working out into the extremities, building a very personal vocabulary that speaks to the observer almost as a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Peter Chin began his workshop by explaining that he would only speak to us and not do too much movement due to an injury from a performing arts uh, gig at the Union Station earlier that week. However, his pondering and unsure strategy of how to begin his workshop was evident to us by the look on his face. He reverted to what he felt most comfortable in doing and gave us personal insight into his world by storytelling through movement of, of, of his incident at the station. This set the tone for what would be expected in the work we were about to engage ourselves in and would explain how people can make movement qualities and isolations intrinsic to their own style. Now fast forward, when I'm writing my thesis, the title of my thesis was called uh, um, Reconstruction, Restoration, Preservation, an investigation into contemporary art derived from traditional Blackfoot song and dance. And I had went out, I was interested in this concept, I was interested in these ideologies and, and pillars and structures of, of, of how dance and song inform us as a people in, um, in our Blackfoot culture. And I had spoken to four um, Aboriginal contemporary artists, artists in visual arts, dance, uh, uh, song, song creation, and, uh, and, and dance on film. And I also spoke to elders in our community, and we talked about the sacred dancing, 
we talked about uh, dances and how they were given to our people and songs and how they were given to our people. And uh, speaking to my elders, we talked about uh, how, how the consciousness and how the songs are consistently around us and how you can walk through, even just walking from here to the, to, to the exit door, if we're conscious enough, those melodies come. I was speaking to Olivia Tailfeathers, who is a contemporary songwriter and, uh, and musician, and she talked about working in, this, in, this, in these structures, and she is a contemporary recording artist, and uh, she talked about the story of how she went down to the, to, the, uh, to the Belly River, and sitting there, she started having this dialogue, this physical dialogue with these beavers. And these beavers would splash and dip and breathe, you know, and they were right in front of her. And so she started speaking Blackfoot to them. And she started speaking in Blackfoot sign language to them. And the layers started coming in. As they started coming in, she started to develop this, this melody. And this melody came to her and she started to place all of this together after spending hours down there. And, and she began to sing, right? She began to sing. We are, we are, hey, 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 and then this other layer came in higher above with, with, with higher voices, like the grandmothers. We are, we are, we are, we are, we are, hey, 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 ho. So all of these layers started to interweave themselves together, and I was like, I, I just thought this was absolutely brilliant. And, uh, and we talked about this, and, and going back and doing some cross-referencing, right? I, I, I just, I can't research on a computer, right? I can't have a, all these hidden files and looking at it and call something up. So what I did in my mother's living room, right? I had these stacks of interviews, I had these stacks of CDs, I had these stacks of songs. And uh, so it, I started to pile them all up, and I started to cross-reference by putting these charts on the wall. Then I used pieces of yarn to sort of go, okay, this connects to that, this connects to that, this connects to that, using all these different colors, right? And when people come walking into the living room, they look at it and they go, well, Tor, are you doing your art again? Wonderful installation piece, right? And I looked at it and I never thought of it that way, but I looked at it and thought, only I could understand this, right? <laughs> But it was great, and then we started looking at the, at the lines, and then we started, you know, thinking about Native science, and how that contributes, and how, how it's so embedded in, in the songs, and how it's all, all there, and, and the ancestors, and, and the, uh, the elders have been talking about this for a long time. And uh, one of my elders talked about walking through, and when you hear, and you can listen, and you, and, and you can, through the blood, blood memory, as Peter Chin talked about, but again, my elder talked about it in a different way that was so parallel to this, which was very universal, and started to talk about um, <clears throat> how you can walk through and, and the wind through the grass, you know, the cries of the animal, the howling of the wolf can all sort of develop, develop that. So I have to tell you a really interesting story. I was at York University, I was walking down, down between the Osgoode Law School and the Fine Arts School, and I was, as I was walking down, I'm pondering all of this stuff, and I'm like, thinking, geez, I just, I, I just got back from the blood reserve, and I'm like, when is it my turn? I'm studying all of this. Here's all these brilliant artists with their stories, and, and, and using that, those, those ideas, and using that as a working model to express themselves in, in the Blackfoot culture. I was like, well, when is it my turn, right? So as, as, as I was walking through, you know, those, um, those little whirlwinds that come up, and all the dust, and all the garbage is flying. Well, it just so hit as I was I, as I stepped onto the onto the concrete, and it just it just blew around my shoulder, and, and it sort of hugged me like this. And I was like, I was like, wow, you know, I just I sort of jumped up, and I was like, wow. And then the squirrel over here jumped up and looked at me and took off. And then this this chip bag that was lying there, the squirrel came out of it and went, holy shit, you know, and ran down the hill. And when he ran down the hill, I didn't even know by the loading deck that there was all these birds, and these birds came flying up, right. <laughs> Right, and as I was walking, this 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 loon came up to me, and you know how they extend their wings, right? And they really get you know big and all this stuff. Started to chase me, and it started hissing at me. So I started running down with my bags, and as I was running, right, and all these people were sitting on the grass, and they were sitting on the benches, and on this side, and I'm you know I'm here, and they're all looking at me, and this loon is like running after me, and I'm like, holy oh, shit, you know. And by the time I got across the road, I was like, did that just happen? Did that just happen? As if that just happened, you know? And I'm looking at everybody, and everybody's just walking around. Yeah, look 
that idiot, you know? And, but, but the connection, I automatically, automatically went to the feet, and the feet were connecting. So, so I sort of went to bed and thought about this, and thought about this, and I thought, is, is, is this mine? No, it can't be that crazy Luna. There, no, this, this cannot be something that sacred to me, but it was. And, and then I phoned home, and I talked to my elder, and he said, it's yours. So after, after three days, I got up in the middle of the night, and I was like, of course. This has to be a movement piece. This has to be a movement piece. All that connectivity, all that exchange of energy, what happened through the wind and nature and human and animals and earth and other people connected around this. Although I look like the silly one and it was only my experience, it was a connection to everything else. <clears throat> so I invited, uh, I invited a, a Toronto choreographer to come into the uh, studio to, to hash this out. We just needed, I, I just needed to get in there and start moving and start discovering what this was all about and, uh, and bringing all these stories together and going back to my installation piece in my mother's living room, right? So looking at all the stories, looking at how I started to connect all of these and the idea of transformation and transformation to the body and that connection, that connectivity. It became very simple. Um, Peter Brook, often talks about how he would like to capture in theater that, that raw essence of performance and ritual, the observers, the people involved in the ritual. You can, you can never ever get to that, to that height, that elevation in terms of theater. Theater is also, in, in, as far as I'm concerned, is, is a ritual in itself, you know. One of, my, one of my friends, who's a performance artist, said even a bowel movement is ritual, right? So, so I, I began to explore, and I began to explore this, and, and we came up with some, some interesting moves, some interesting vocabulary, and, and stuff that s started to inform my body, and I started to place these because our people were shapeshifters at one time or another, right? They said, this, this whole humanity has been asleep for hundreds and hundreds of years, but we're able to move things with the mind, we're able to transform, and because everything is connected. And when you look at it to the dances nowadays, you look at the, um, you look at the birds, you look at the prairie chicken dances, right? When I brought some people from Toronto, I brought them to a powwow, they're like, wow, these bodies are totally transformed. And um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of my work and that's where I'm coming from. And that's what, that's what interests me. And uh, I'm just gonna do a little, a little demonstration of that, of that, uh, of where we started to begin with. And, and coming from stories that originate from the core, and that was my story. <laughs> Thanks for bringing my soundtrack. <laughs> Sherry, you can't go wrong with her, right? Okay, that, that was long for a writer to have a soundtrack. <laughs> during the performances. My apologies.
Thank you.